Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about heart disease, which is the number one killer globally, and Russia has the highest rates out of any country in the developed world. Now, usually when I'm putting together my videos, I will take something out of the news, I'll find some sort of news feed, and then develop it into a much more interesting and detailed story. But today's video is slightly different. The reason that I've put together a video on heart disease is that over the course of the last week, I lost my father. He had a cardiac arrest in the street, and although he was given CPR and was taken to hospital and put onto a ventilator, unfortunately, they couldn't revive him and he died. And it got me thinking about what heart disease is all about and why it happens and why it's such a big killer all around the world. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at the top 20 causes of death so far in 2024. We'll then go on to have a look at the countries with the highest rates of heart disease. And as I've already said, Russia is right at the top of that list. We'll then dig into the details as to why heart disease occurs. What are the drivers? And I can tell you that some of the contributing factors that we'll have a look in some detail at are smoking, obesity, alcoholism, and the level of healthcare that's provided by the country that you're living in. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So I think Russia is ranked at number one in the heart disease charts. What the impact of that could be on the Russian economy, and also what you could be doing to try to reduce your risks of being impacted by heart disease at some point in your life. But before we get on to all of that, once again, I'd like to say thank you so much to everybody that's supporting the channel. If you've bought me a coffee or sent me a YouTube super thanks or signed up as a patron or a member, thank you. This chart, which as you can see is constantly updating, so will already be out of date by the time you're watching this video by definition of the fact that I've recorded it and then uploaded it, shows the total number of deaths in 2024 and provides us with the latest data of the top 20 causes of death worldwide. At number 20 are deaths related to childbirth, 19 is stomach cancer, 18 is suicide, number 17 is colorectal cancer or bowel cancer, 16 is liver cancer, 15 is hypertensive heart disease, so heart disease related to blood pressure, 14 is deaths related to HIV or AIDS, number 13 is deaths related to pregnancy before it's gone full term, Kidney disease is number 12, cirrhosis of the liver number 11, at number 10 tuberculosis which is still a major problem in a lot of the developing world despite the fact that the number of cases have been reduced significantly in advanced economies, at number 9 are diseases related to diarrhea, number 8 deaths caused by road injury and road accidents, number 7 deaths related to diabetes, at number 6 is cancer of the lungs, trachea and bronchus, Number five is deaths related to Alzheimer's and other dementias. At number four are deaths related to the respiratory tract, including bronchitis, pneumonia, influenza, and whooping cough. At number three are deaths related to chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is a type of obstructive lung disease characterized by long-term poor airflow, usually caused by tobacco smoking or air pollution. The second biggest cause of death worldwide is strokes, and by far the biggest single killer every day is heart disease. So as we've just seen, around 17% of all deaths globally are directly related to heart disease. So I wanted to go through which countries are the most affected. And the World Atlas has put together a top 10 chart of the developed countries to look at which have the highest incidence of heart disease. And at number 10, with around 800 deaths per 100,000 people, is the United Kingdom. And although the worldwide average for deaths is around 17%, in the UK it is significantly higher, with 37% of female deaths and 38% of male deaths directly linked to heart disease. So that makes it a significant problem. Ireland comes in at number 9 on the list, with around 815 deaths per 100,000 people. And about 33% of all deaths in Ireland are linked to heart disease, and it's the number one killer. China is ranked at number 8 on the list, with around 930 deaths per 100,000. But it's estimated that 1 in 5 people have some form of heart disease, 
which accounts for more than 230 million individuals. So that is a potential huge disaster waiting to happen in the Chinese population. We're only talking about deaths in this top 10 ranking, but China has over 230 million people that are currently being treated for heart disease. Argentina comes in at number seven on the list with around 990 deaths per 100,000 people. And interestingly, one of the biggest contributing factors in Argentina is the lack of exercise undertaken by the people with heart disease. The Czech Republic comes in at number six on the list with around 1,080 deaths per 100,000 people. And that equates to around 34% of all deaths in the country. And the reasons in the Czech Republic are related predominantly to a lack of exercise, excessive alcohol intake, and smoking. Poland is number five on the list with around 1,170 deaths per 100,000. Bulgaria is number four with 1,250 deaths per 100,000. Romania is number three with 1,280 deaths per 100,000. Hungary is number two with 1,330. And at number one on the list with a whopping 1,750 deaths per 100,000, accounting for around 55% of all deaths is Russia. And the reasons why the heart disease mortality rate in Russia is so high are linked to a number of factors, including alcoholism, obesity, smoking, and the level of healthcare. Now, you may have read about studies that claim that moderate amounts of alcohol are actually good for you. They can be beneficial to your health. However, there are a lot of question marks over the validity of that research. And one of the things that is proven is that high levels of alcohol consumption increase your blood pressure. And increased blood pressure is bad news for your heart because it puts more pressure on it. It has to pump the blood faster. And also high levels of alcohol intake can lead to an increase in calories, which can lead to obesity, which puts further pressure on your heart. So the general consensus is that high levels of alcohol consumption does have a correlation to heart disease. This chart shows the top 10 countries with the highest rates of alcoholism or alcohol use disorder for males. And the percentages on this chart relate to the number of people who've shown two of the following symptoms within the last 12 months. In the past year, have you had times when you ended up drinking more or longer than you intended? more than once wanted to cut down or stop drinking or tried but couldn't, spent a lot of time drinking or being sick or getting over the after effects, wanted a drink so badly you couldn't think of anything else, found that drinking or being sick from drinking often interfered with taking care of your home or family or caused job trouble or school problems, continued to drink even though it was causing you trouble with your family or friends, given up or cut back on activities that were important or interesting to you or gave you pleasure in order to drink. More than once gotten into situations while or after drinking that increased your chances of getting hurt, such as driving, swimming, using machinery, walking in a dangerous area or having unprotected sex. Continued to drink even though it was making you feel depressed or anxious or adding to another health problem, or after having had a memory blackout, had to drink much more than you once did to get the effect you want, or found that your usual number of drinks had much less effect than before, found that when the effects of alcohol were wearing off, you had withdrawal symptoms such as trouble sleeping, shakiness, restlessness, nausea, sweating, a racing heart, or a seizure, or sense that things were not there. And what this chart shows is that Russia has the highest level of alcoholism amongst males out of any country in the world with a recorded percentage of 36.9%, which is more than one in three. Now, what's really interesting is that if we look at the same statistics for women, the percentages are significantly lower. And what's also interesting about this chart is that the United States is ranked as the country in the world with the highest percentage of female alcoholics at 10.4%, which is obviously significantly lower than 36.9% that we saw for Russia for men. But it tells us that there is still a problem in the USA, albeit at a much lower level. And what's also interesting about that statistic is that the USA doesn't appear in the top 10 for males at all. Russia is ranked as the country with the second highest percentage of female alcoholics at 7.4%.
And interestingly, we've also got the United Kingdom on this chart with 4.7%. And if we look at the combined statistics for both men and women, you can see that Hungary is the country that's ranked at the top of this list with 21.2%, closely followed by Russia at 20.9%, and the USA comes in at number 5 with a combined total of 13.9%. Smoking is also directly linked to heart disease for a number of reasons. Firstly, when you're actually smoking, you're going through the process of smoking a cigarette. You're restricting the amount of oxygen that's going around your bloodstream because you're obviously taking in all of the chemicals that are in that cigarette. You're also increasing your heart rate. The nicotine raises your heart rate. It gives you a rush and that puts further pressure on your heart. You're also increasing your blood pressure, which continues to put more pressure on your heart. And also the chemicals that are in cigarette smoke actually make the lining of your arteries sticky. And that means that the arteries then collect fatty deposits, which means that your arteries become clogged and the blood can't flow and therefore applies even further pressure onto your heart. So overall, smoking is extremely bad news for your heart. And this map of the world shows the current percentages of each country's population that smokes now. And what this reveals is that the global average currently is 20.1%. So that means that one in five people all across the world are still smoking. So if we focus in firstly on Russia, the current percentage is 26.8%, which is 6.7% above the global average. In the USA, the percentage of people smoking is 23%, which is almost 3% above the global average. In Germany, it's 22%. In the UK, it's 15.4%. In Australia, it's 13.6%. And in Canada, it's 13%. So what this chart highlights is that the percentage of people smoking in Russia at 26.8% continues to be a major contributory factor to the high levels of heart disease in the country. A person's body mass index takes their weight and divides it by their height squared to give us a number. And that number is considered to be obese if it's above 30. And this map of the world shows us the current body mass index rates for all countries in the world. And if we look at the colour chart down at the bottom, it ranges from light green at one end to dark blue at the other. And the greeny blue section is where it turns 30. And as we go more towards the blue end of the spectrum, we're getting more and more into the heavily obese. And what this chart reveals is that the obesity rate in Russia is currently 30.3, so classified as being obese. And interestingly, the obesity rate amongst females is 31.4. However, amongst males, it's 27.5. What this data is telling us is that there is an obesity problem in Russia, and that's obviously another contributory factor to the problems with heart disease. Now, whilst we've got this data here, let's have a look at a few other selected countries. The official obesity rating for the USA is 42.7, which puts the USA in the third highest capacity of obesity. And if we look at the split between male and female, the obesity rate in females is 41.8, and for males, it's 42.2. So this is the opposite of the situation in Russia. More males are classified as obese than females in the USA. If we look at the rating for the UK, the obesity rate is 20.1 which is actually in the healthy category. Anything between 18.5 and 25 is considered to be healthy. So the UK is doing pretty well. If you look at the rating for Canada, it's 24.3. So officially in the healthy range as well. However, when you look at the split, females are rated at 22, so firmly in the healthy category. However, the rating for males is 26.7, which puts them into the overweight category. And finally, the official obesity rating for Australia is 31.3, which again puts it into the lowest level of obesity, with females being rated at 30.2 and males 32.5. As I mentioned at the start of the video, one of the contributing factors to the levels of heart disease is the amount of healthcare offered by each country. And the healthcare index 
is a statistical analysis of the overall quality of the healthcare system, including healthcare infrastructure, healthcare professionals' competencies, the availability and cost of medicine available, and the government of that country's readiness to support the system. And all of these factors are combined to produce an overall healthcare index. And this chart ranks all of the countries in the world for 2023. And as you can see, the country with the best overall healthcare provision was Taiwan, followed by South Korea, Australia, number three, Canada, Sweden, Ireland, the Netherlands, Germany, Norway, and at number 10, Israel. And if we carry on down this list and pick out some selected countries, the United States is ranked at number 15. The United Kingdom is ranked at number 27. India is ranked at number 29. Brazil, 38. And Russia comes in at number 42 on this list, which is significantly lower than its world ranking in terms of GDP and development. So what this data is telling us is that the level of healthcare provision in Russia is significantly lower than expected given the development of the country and once again is a further contributing factor to what's happening with heart disease. Because if people aren't being given treatments and they're not being given medicine to help them deal with their heart disease issues, then that increases the likelihood of having some sort of incident like a heart attack or a cardiac arrest, which can therefore lead to death. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because, as I mentioned right at the start of this video, I've had personal experience of somebody dying from heart disease recently. And it got me thinking about how big this problem is. And as we've seen from today's video, it is the number one killer worldwide. In virtually every country in the world, heart disease and the related problems are the biggest form of mortality. That is the number one problem that everybody's dealing with. And some of this is congenital, so you may be born with a heart defect or other issues, but a lot of the problems that are being caused are because of lifestyle choices. As we talked about, alcoholism has a big impact on heart disease because it increases blood pressure, it increases the pressure on your heart, and also excessive alcohol can also lead to increases in calories, which can lead to obesity. And obesity is another problem because carrying too much weight increases the amount of work that your heart is having to do. And over the long term, there is a likelihood that you'll get fatty deposits in your arteries, which will restrict the amount of blood flow, reduce the amount of oxygen that's moving around your body, and increase the chances of you having some sort of major problem. And the other major lifestyle choice is smoking. If you're a regular smoker, you are definitely increasing the likelihood of having heart disease. Because as I mentioned earlier in the video, smoking carries all sorts of chemicals with it. And those chemicals increase the stickiness of the lining of your arteries, which therefore then attract fatty deposits, restrict the blood flow and reduce the amount of oxygen circulating around your body. And as we saw from the data on the country analysis, Russia is the country with the biggest single problem in the world. The number of people dying in Russia from heart disease is streets ahead of most other countries. And the reason for that is down to a combination of poor lifestyle choices and also poor healthcare provision. Russia is ranked very lowly in terms of what it's offering its population in terms of dealing with things like heart disease. So this is a big problem from Russia's perspective because it's going to be very difficult to turn it around. Firstly, changing people's lifestyles, encouraging them to drink less, to smoke less, to eat less, to take more exercise, all of that takes a long period of time. It's an educational thing. The more education that you give to your people, the better they are likely to treat themselves in the long term. So that's not something that Russia will be able to fix overnight. And its healthcare system is also a major problem because as we've talked about a lot on the channel, Russia is currently under financial pressure. Because of the sanctions that have been applied against Russia, it's been posting losses in the economy. So it's using its short-term reserves to be able to fund those losses and also to keep the war effort in Ukraine going. So in terms of healthcare, Russia isn't investing heavily at the moment. So it's likely that the provision of healthcare will continue to remain at the bottom of the charts. It may even find itself falling further down those charts if Russia fails to invest into the system and attract in more doctors. And it's likely over the last 18 months that Russia will have seen lots of healthcare people leaving the country. 
Over a million people have fled since the war started, and it's likely that a portion of those came from doctors and nurses and other healthcare professionals. So the problem in Russia right now is a real issue, and it's not something that President Putin is likely to be able to fix overnight. And when you combine this with all of the other problems that are happening in the Russian economy, it's only likely to make things worse. So the overall summary of today's video is that heart disease is a major problem, and it's something that all of us should be thinking about. No matter what age you are, it's never too late to start looking after your heart. So if you can cut back on things that are damaging to your heart and could restrict the length of your life, then I would seriously encourage you to have a think about that and maybe make some changes. Because as I said, this has personally affected me. And if I could turn the clock back and try to encourage my father to change his lifestyle habits and to do things slightly differently, it may have led to a better outcome and a longer life. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, you found it useful, informative and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end and here's something to put a smile on your face.